Well, it's interesting. The first time I ever saw him, I actually went in with another nurse to help her start an IV on him. And he just looked kind of pitiful. He was working hard to breathe. He kind of had a rash, and he just looked like he didn't feel good. But I can tell you he didn't look so different than many kids that come through the PICU that have bad respiratory disease uh, for whatever reason. And sometimes they look like that and that's the worst that they look. And then after a day or two, they start getting better. And then sometimes they just deteriorate. And that's what happened with Isaiah. And so he stayed there all Thursday morning and then Friday mid afternoon is when his lung collapsed. And we had to move from one room to another and he had to get chest tubes. A few days after I saw him initially, they had to um, take over his breathing for him and um, intubate him and put him on the ventilator. And then he was on the ventilator a few days and having to escalate that care. Like he started out on just a conventional ventilator and then they escalated that care to a high frequency oscillating ventilator. And he still just, that gas exchange, the oxygen in and CO2 out was not going well for him. They were kind of like, yeah, the last option we have to kind of treat him, it's a high risk, but it's kind of like the last option, and that's when we first heard about ECMO. The machine is what's exchanging those gases and his blood in order for him to have a fighting chance. So for him, at that point, ECMO was a life-saving treatment. So he was on the ventilator for about 13 days or so before we even put him on ECMO. Then he was on ECMO for 39 days. Then he was still on the ventilator for two or three more weeks after that. So um, anytime you have an almost two year old on the ventilator, they have to be sedated. So he was in a state of sedation for um, two months. Of course, as soon as we put him on ECMO, we got the physical therapy and occupational therapy team involved. It takes the whole team and it takes in our case, you know, taking care of this child, pediatric specific people. The importance of whenever you're using such a complex therapy, you always have to have backup available to you at any time. While Isaiah was on ECMO, we had another baby that we were worried was gonna need ECMO as well. And so we have two cardio help pumps. And um, so if they were both in use, there would be no backup. So having another cardio help or two would be huge in just my ability to, to serve other people or more than one patient at a time. This is the only children's um, hospital in all of West Texas and Eastern New Mexico that has a pediatric ECMO program. I think Midge is amazing, like took off her nurse's outfit and put on her mother's outfit and she would like, you know, let me cry to her and stuff like that. So she just gave me her heart, you know, in the time that I needed somebody to be there for me. They were just so awesome and to see him and, you know, be on ECMO for that long and to see his lungs turn around. The day we got an x-ray and, and there was air in his lungs was awesome. And um, just, I can't even describe the feeling and I can't describe the pride that I have for um, this program and the people that I work with and the doctors that I work with. Seeing him progress through it and and uh, persevere the way he did, it's just the most satisfying feeling in the world. It was scary at first, obviously, with everything happening, but they definitely had your back and were like, hey, this is what's going on, this is what we need to prepare for. They were awesome, our whole experience, staff as well. We're beyond grateful that Covenant's Children's had the ECMO machines available at the time that Christian as he had needed them, because that was the last resort to save his life because we knew with, with faith and with God and with each other that he would be able to get through this, and especially with the wonderful doctors and team of nurses that they had. You know, they, they did everything they could and they did, I believe they did their best. Yeah, Isaiah is an example of a patient that um, deteriorated over a few days, um, but then got to a point where what we could do with conventional medical management was just flat not enough. And he was a perfect patient to utilize ECMO to save his life, to save his lungs. I'm so encouraged that as this hospital grows, the ECMO program will grow and all the specialties will grow and we can take care of the sickest of sick and do that here at home in West Texas.